it's Rachel from All About The House. In this video, I just want to run through how to download and install fonts on your computer. I did do a blog post about this previously where I typed out the instructions, but I thought it would be handy to have a video because videos are super quick and easy to follow. So um, basically, you type in Google like free font download, um, or you might do like cursive font download, etc. Some of my favorite places to find fonts though, good starting place if you're not sure where to go, is dovefont.com as well as um, Font Squirrel and then Font Zone. Those are my top three places. There are literally thousands of fonts that you can download. Fonts for anything and everything. You've got cursive script if you're doing like a wedding invitation, um, a nice simple font which is called a serif font if you're making for example a product catalog or so many different types of fonts and most of these font websites will um, separate them out for you so you can filter that way. If you know the name of the font that you want to use, if you've seen it somewhere else, you can just type it straight into Google. Um, so you might have like Times New Roman font download and it'll take you to a page where you can download it. Just be careful because some font websites are like spammy and they'll, they just don't look very um, like respectable and they might do like pop-up links to, oh, you won a million dollars and some other nonsense. So just be careful, um, make sure it's actually got like a proper download button um, and that it looks like proper, not just an ad. So be just be wary of that, you don't want to get a virus on your computer. Alright, so once you find a font that you like, you can either type it in the search box and find the exact font or have a look around. I really like this font, it's really pretty, but take note, it's free for personal use. So that's okay if you're doing a project for yourself. But if you are downloading a font to use for commercial use, so I use a lot of fonts for um, commercial use for my Etsy shop, which is called All About the House, then I need to make sure that it's for commercial use. So you want to just have a look around and make sure it's got commercial use for it. Or sometimes you might be required to make a donation. And you can also download by like top rated, etc. So all of these are for personal use. So if we go to Font Squirrel, and let's say we want this quicksand font. You would just click on that font while that's loading. What does Font Zone have? We can go view font details. My computer's a bit slow, so I've just got multiple tabs running. So on Font Squirrel, we can see the license. They have this big long license agreement. But basically, if you want to use it for commercial use, just make sure that you use it in line with um, the terms of use, which is basically don't claim it as your own and give credit. Um, where, where required. So in here, these have commercial, uh, sorry, personal use. So if one of these wants to load, um, it'll say for commercial use if it's allowed. And if it did, you would just go download if you're using for commercial use or make a donation if you need to. One of the good things about Defont is you can type your text in here. So if we just put in type and then go submit, it will update and show a preview of that font with that text. So I really like using pretty fonts for labels. Um, I do have an e-course about how to make labels in Photoshop if you're interested. And one of the starting points that I do is come onto the font and type in um, the text. So for example, self-raising flower if I was making pantry labels. And I can see how it looks and compare a whole bunch of different um, fonts before I start downloading them all and then making them in Photoshop. So you can do it that way. Um, and then we've also got this font here. So this one, um, you can donate if you like the font because it's free for personal use. It'll also tell you how many times it's been downloaded. So that's, um, if it's a popular font, then you go, okay, this could be a good idea if I'm making it for a product and it's a popular font. Or hey, maybe I should use that rather than one that's not so popular. Anyway, once you find the font that you like, you literally just click the download button and it will download to your computer. It'll be in a zip file. I always just go open with and hit OK. I'm using Firefox to download, but you can also use Chrome. I've never had an issue with downloading a font based on my internet browser. And then it will open up the folder. So this one only has one font style, but sometimes it'll have um, like the font name and then bold or an outline, etc. So all you do is double left click on the true type font file, and then you go install, and it will install it into your computer. And when it's installed, this install button will be grayed out. So now I know that it's installed. And now you can go into Word or Photoshop or whatever you want to use to um, start using that font. So I'm just going to pause the video while I get up Word. All right, so I've got Word up. Now I can start typing. So if I just go type text here, I've chosen the font from the 
font menu in Word. You would do the same thing if you were doing Photoshop, just find the font style section and then you can change it to that font. So I've recently used it, that's why it's appearing up the top here. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that it's been added to your font menu and you can start typing, you can increase the size, you can change the text color. So another thing that I do if I'm trying to decide between a few different font styles, so um, I use the default preview as well and then I download the fonts and then I can compare them side by side by using a Word doc. So I like to just copy this down a bunch of times and then highlight that text and change it to a different font style. So let's say that I wanted to use this font here and then I might change it to this one as well, a uh, different one again. Oops, I did both at the same time then. So change to that font, you get the idea. And then you can also change the color if you were trying to choose between different shades of red. You can use the color picker tool and change it. So let's say I wanted more of a darker red. You can do it that way. And then you can play around, do I want it in bold? And then I can compare that against this one here. So that's in bold, that's not. Bold looks good, but it might be a bit busy. Do I want it in italics? Um, do I prefer this font style or this one? And then you can compare them side by side and it's a lot easier when you're trying to decide which one you want to use. So that's just something that I do. I have a Word doc where I have my favorite fonts and I have that categorized. So I have like cursive fonts and then I have um, samples like this only I actually type the font name. So the font name for this one was called Western. So I type out the name of the font and then I change it to that font style so I can look at it and go, okay, I want to use Western font, not this um, LA Headlights one. So that's really good if you are making printables or um, downloads or you're basically doing anything involving text. So I like to just have a Word doc with all of that in it. So that's how you download and install a font on your computer. If you want some more free graphic design tutorials, I do have a um, library with some more videos that you can watch um, on how to do things in Photoshop and then I also have a few for Canva which is like a free online alternative to Photoshop if you are not wanting to use Photoshop it looks too complicated it's really not but if you want to just use something for free make something quickly then I recommend Canva so if you want to check that out I'll include a link below this video to where you can find some more um, graphic design video tutorials so I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful